Hello, John Gillette here from the University of Alabama at Birmingham to talk to you about using bedside ultrasound to evaluate for pneumonia. There's no specific technique to scanning for pneumonia. One simply scans through the intercostal spaces between the ribs to look for the signs we're going to demonstrate. However, a careful and systematic approach to scanning the large surface area of the thorax must be employed in the absence of localizing data. If, however, one has localizing information, such as vocal pleuritic pain, unilateral decreased breath sounds, a questionable finding on a chest radiograph, and so forth, you can focus the exam in that area. Furthermore, the lung bases will be the site of many consolidations and should be examined with particular attention. Use a low-frequency transducer, such as the phased array or curvilinear probe. These will provide adequate depth for looking into the thorax. As we know, normal healthy lung is mostly air and produces a vague foggy appearance on the ultrasound without any actual lung tissue image. However, when air is removed from a section of lung and the air spaces are either collapsed or filled with fluid, the deaerated lung parenchyma produces a tissue image that is easily identifiable with ultrasound. Here we see normal lung tissue in the top picture, but in the bottom image we see a focal area of consolidation with normal aerated lungs surrounding it. This represents a small right upper lobe pneumonia. What you see in the study of pneumonia is the deaerated lung parenchyma, which takes on an appearance similar to liver. This is sometimes described as hepatization. Here we see a large consolidation in the right lung base abutting the diaphragm. We also see numerous hyperechoic punctate specks and branching lines within the consolidation. These are sonographic air bronchograms, where small amounts of air remain trapped in air passages. Sometimes, air and fluid may be seen moving within these passages. These are dynamic bronchograms, which increases the specificity for an infectious process versus, say, atelectasis, the most common imitator of pneumonia. Pleural effusions are commonly seen with pneumonias for, and for many other reasons. Their presence broadens your differential diagnosis and raises the possibility that this consolidation is due to compressive atelectasis. In summary, using point-of-care ultrasound to detect a pneumonia is a rapid and relatively simple exam that can be performed at the bedside in any setting. It is repeatable and has been described as being used to monitor the resolution and re-aeration of lung consolidations. There is no radiation involved and it's a dynamic exam that the clinician can direct to address the patient's and his or her own needs and interests. One should be aware, however, that there are some aspects of this application that can be difficult for instance, a small consolidation may be missed in the voluminous thorax. Furthermore, the consolidation must be superficial enough to touch the pleura, since any interposing air would block the ultrasound waves. Finally, pneumonia may be difficult to distinguish from other causes of consolidation, mainly atelectasis, which may be either obstructive or compressive. As always, don't be afraid to just go look and start building your experience and therefore skill with ultrasound. Thank you for listening.